Now I got a lot of stuff to cover this week, so there's no time for messing around and telling jokes and stuff. I'm almost as angry as when I talk to Josh. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 42 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you're not familiar with the show, it's where I take you through a bunch of projects or do some weathering, which nobody seemed to like, or just catch you up on stuff that's been going on. This week, there's a lot of stuff to cover. I have been busy, so let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanted to share was this anime or manga style paint job that I did. And this was done on the Cop Wago uh, body from Proline. I say that because like on the label, it just says Cop Wago. Part of the sticker was covered up. Um, but uh, yeah, here it is. This is a very simple, easy to do paint uh, thing. You can do this uh, on any body, really. It works super easy on Lexan. It'll work on a regular body, uh, whatever you like. Um, paint in your base layer, which is what I did here. I just used some Tamiya green that I had. Uh, and then I got some of these really cool Posca paint markers. These are acrylic based paint markers. Uh, they come in a wide variety of colors. If you get the the mega pack, you get some big, thick boys. Uh, these are thick, it's no joke. Um, they uh, they have a very, very thick nib. Uh, this is like a eight mil nib, I think, on these ones. You can get smaller ones, of course, and that's what is in this smaller package here. Uh, these are more for your detail work. Uh, but yeah, these work really, really well. And as you can see, um, it's just as simple as sort of like painting on some schemes. Uh, I've kind of picked up what I've learned about this technique from a Instagrammer, KBMer1. KBMer1, I think is what it is. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below uh, if you're interested in checking out his work. It's very similar to this. Uh, he uses um, paint, uh, primarily spray, to do sort of the highlighted areas, as you can see. I tried it with the markers. I think if I were gonna do it again, I would also do it with spray and there's plenty of uh, proline paint uh, that you can use to mix up your own airbrush uh, polycarbonate colors. So um, that's what I would do on the next one. And I will do this again because I do think it's a pretty cool looking technique. Uh, all of the all of the black lines are done with the Posca markers. You just kind of highlight body panel lines and uh, uh, gaps in doors and such. And, um, and then you add all these little stripes to make it sort of appear as if it's sort of like this animated kind of look. And it does kind of actually look a bit like an illustration. It's kind of a cool look. I think it really kind of lends itself well to uh, this scale too. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Uh, I'm thinking though I'm going to do it in a much larger format. I've got that really cool uh, Dodge Viper body for my felony. I think that might be a really cool place to try that out. If you agree, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild or if I decide to do that paint. Um, this is a really easy technique. Anybody can do this. It's pretty random. I didn't really give it much thought about where I wanted those uh, different color paints to be. I just sort of thought about it for a half second, scribbled on some lines, and there you go. I think it turned out pretty good though. I'm pretty happy with it. I will probably end up using this body for um, the purposes of practice with this SCX10 Pro, which is uh, in desperate need of some time on the rocks before we get it out. Uh, it's going to be obviously my class two build, uh, which will have a much heavier 3D printed body on it, which is right back there. Uh, but there you go, um, very easy technique. Uh, I do highly recommend these Posca markers though. They uh, will definitely add to your experience and uh, you can achieve a look just like this. It's kind of cool, right? Yes, I agree. Okay, on to the next thing. To all of you hard body fans out there, this one's for you. MFAB is back. This is an MFAB body right here. If you're not familiar with MFAB or MFAB Studios, I highly recommend you check it out. I will put a link down below to their Instagram. They do 3D printed bodies. And in the early days, they did a lot of FDM uh, coarse printed 3D body kits. 
that's where the Forerunner that I did came from. Uh, also, uh, FJ-60-2, FJ-62. Uh, there's a whole bunch that he used to make. Now he's moved to SLA, or uh, Laser Sintered Nylon. And as you can see, these bodies are a lot smoother. These are way easier to work with because there's basically no sanding required. With those older FDM style prints, you needed to sand a lot to get them anywhere close to smooth. And most people didn't do that, so they didn't get very good looking bodies. Now, it's really easy to achieve. And these are really great kits. They come unassembled, of course. Uh, all the body panels are included, but there's a lot of these other 3D printed elements to help make this a much more rigid body. They're uh, very easy to assemble, a lot of CA, uh, and I'm gonna actually go back over and probably JB weld the whole thing once it's, uh, once it's fully together. Uh, but as you can see, the detail is spectacular, way better than a 3D print uh, normally would have been, and uh, it just, man, it just makes it so easy to have a very unique body. This is an LC76 Land Cruiser, not very common by any means, but um, one that I definitely wanted to build. It's got a lot of really nice lines to it. It's a fun body and I'm really excited to build it. Now, um, not only do you get the body, of course, but you get a ton of printed accessories. Uh, uh, you get all the windows, wipers, uh, all the clear lenses also printed in uh, 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 resin. Uh, tons of different bumpers, and uh, I op opted to get a bunch of uh, extra bits, including all of these fender flares. So you can really kind of like jazz this one up and make it a little more off-roady which I think is going to be pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> I've had this one sitting around for a while, uh, but it looks like MFAB is back in full production. So, left-hand drive dashboard. Got all the bits and pieces. Um, you will need to fashion your own interior. Uh, he doesn't offer that for a lot of cases, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I'm not, f I'm, I'm no stranger to scratch building, so shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm really looking forward to getting this one started. It's probably gonna sit for a little while until I get the regionals out of the way, and then we'll get back onto this and have some fun building a nice trail truck that looks accurate. These are great. Uh, MFAB, I'll definitely put a link down below because you will want some of these. He's got a lot of different quality bodies. Okay, moving on. Jensei sent me the new iMars D300 dual smart charger. Uh, this is a, a significant upgrade over the original iMars. Where is it? This is a significant upgrade over the original iMars dual, which is still a very good charger, but um, this one is a lot better. Um, it now uh, is more powerful. Not that I would recommend this, but you can charge it up to 16 amps on both outputs at once, which is a lot more powerful uh, than I'm used to and more than I will ever need. Um, but the really uh, significant feature here is the new smart connector here. And this is kind of taking Gen's Ace uh, chargers to a new level. They do offer a whole series of batteries that feature this new G-Tech smart plug. Uh, these are pretty cool. Let me uh, show you what this looks like here. On the balance port here, you can see there's this little tiny tab here, and that's what you plug into the smart end of the balance board. Once that's inserted, it will tell you exactly what type of battery it is, what type of makeup it is, and what type of charging it will accept, and just basically do it for you. Uh, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of charging. And um, the really great benefit to this is that this charger will still work even if it's not a smart compatible balance port. You don't need to have that in order to make this work on any battery you have. Uh, they do include a wide variety of adapters to your EC3, which will also work with IC3 connectors and DEEMS. So basically everything you need in one nice tight package. Also DC input too. So if you wanted to charge this out in the field off of a big battery, you can. Uh, very nice charger. And this 2S bashing battery, uh, 5200 milliamp hour, will come in quite handy when I finally get to the racetrack, which isn't happening this weekend or next, but maybe the weekend after. It's so funny, I did that whole, let's do some carpet racing thing to get me through the winter, and here we are spring. <laughs> I'm terrible. 
All right, moving on. Some of you were asking when we were gonna see more Blazing Blazer content. Well, here you go, sort of. I primed the hood, and then uh, I had a can of paint explode on me, and I also gooped a bunch of clear coat uh, on the uh, primed surface of where I was repairing the body. So naturally, we're gonna need to do all that again. <laughs> I also decided to replace all of the existing shocks. Uh, these are just uh, remanufactured style uh, of scorcher, sand scorcher shock, which are basically the ones that the Blazing Blazer requires, not requires, but optional part. And uh, yeah, that's basically all that's happened with the Blazer. The other parts are still clean. The rest of it still needs more cleaning. So not a ton of stuff happening there, but don't worry, there will be more someday. Now finally today I want to talk a little bit about a new printer that was sent to me. This is the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon and it is far and away the best printer I've ever used and I'm <laughs> they sent it to me they said don't bother doing a review we've got thousands of those already and I was like great that's perfect and they said just start using it in incorporate it into your routine use it however you're going to use it and just share it and show it off. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, it's a pretty phenomenal printer. And um, the thing about it is how fast it is. That's really sort of the game changer, I think. And uh, the thing about speed is that often there has to be a compromise in order to get that speed. And usually the compromise is quality, not in the case of the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. You can create really quality, smooth looking parts can't believe that I 3D printed these at home because they do look that good. These are just little uh, clips uh, for uh, mounting under your desk and routing wires through. I'm getting into the idea of being a little more organized. Maybe not in this room, but in other rooms. And um, this was printed in a carbon fiber PLA and I actually used that uh, same filament the other day on uh, the Road to the Rockies uh, to show off the sliders, which I might as well, I'll get those over here again. These sliders I designed were also printed in that same carbon fiber PLA. And as you can see, it's just got such a nice smooth, it almost looks like an SLA, uh, like centered nylon style print, similar to what MFAB's using. It's really spectacular stuff and fast. The detail is fantastic. Uh, this was printed at 0.1 two layer height and it's a very very complicated print because it does require a lot of supports um, and uh, there are a couple different ways you can set up supports on this machine and as you can see the quality is just spectacular uh, there's hardly any ringing all these little details are really coming out I mean yes I've primed this so obviously you can see those details a little bit better but it's pretty spectacular that this came off of an FDM filament style printer pretty amazing stuff um, the uh, the benefit, of course, is speed. And one of the ways in which I was able to sort of determine that being a huge change, um, all of the parts uh, for these sliders, there are two parts per, um, all four of those parts took about two hours and 45 minutes on the uh, X1. I set it up on the Prusa with similar settings to see how long it would take there, eight hours and 30 minutes. So a huge time saver and the quality is just as good. Pretty impressive stuff. The other cool thing about it is out of the box with the AMS, which is sort of its uh, filament uh, spool uh, feed system. If you have that, you're set up to do multicolor prints automatically. And uh, that is very cool too. And in fact, for these little parts, I did do that uh, because within the AMS, I had my regular PLA and then I also had a support PLA, which is a much lighter, uh, less rigid PLA, and it works really well as a support structure. It takes a lot longer to print because you are obviously changing filaments back and forth, and there is a fair bit of waste. Let me show you. Here's that uh, support uh, PLA that I was talking about. It, you can see it's a, a much lighter, much easier to sort of um, pull apart uh, than your typical PLA. Now, uh, when you're doing multicolor prints uh, or multimedia prints, like I was just doing there with the, um, the, uh, the assembly for the front of the Porsche motor, it does create all these little poops. <laughs> it poops them out the back of the machine. Uh, I now have a hopper there to collect all of these so they don't just disappear behind the workbench. 
Um, but this is just uh, purging the uh, the filament so you're not mixing colors or mixing medias on each layer. And it has to do that uh, basically every time you change layers uh, or you know change filaments. So uh, it does create a fair bit of waste. Uh, you can tune that so there's less waste overall, and I mean it depends on the sort of color or media that you're using. Um, but just to be able to have that as an option for prints in the future is fantastic. I love that that is an included option. It's a big machine, it takes up way more space than the Prusa does, and uh, it sort of limits... <laughs> It sort of limits how much space I have for other activities, uh, but that's okay uh, because the quality and the speed and the efficiency uh, is fantastic. There's also a Wi-Fi interface. There's also a, uh, a phone interface. So you can actually check on your prints from anywhere in the world. It's very, very cool. There's a camera, there's a light in there. It's really sort of like, uh, and some other reviewers have described it as the Apple of 3D printers, and I kind of have to agree with that. They thought of everything. They looked at all the competition, they took all the features they knew people wanted, and put it into one very nice enclosed machine. And uh, it's absolutely spectacular. I have yet to find any real problems with it. Uh, bottom line though, it's changing how I work in this workshop, speeding up a lot of processes. Uh, if I had had this maybe a month ago, I think class one, for my uh, Porsche build would be a lot further along than it is now. It's really spectacular. And I highly recommend you check one out. Um, and I'll put a link down below so you can check that out for sure. So my thanks to Bamboo Labs for sending me the X1 Carbon. Uh, it's going to get an awful lot of work in the workshop. It's a very cool machine. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this week. Uh, that covers everything that's on the bench and some things that aren't on the bench. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.